Hello there, this is LEGO Robot Combat. It uses LEGO pieces, LEGO electronics, and some third-party electronics to make robots to fight each other in arenas. It's a fantastic hobby that's creative, competitive, and fun. In the last few months of 2024, I was part of a group of LEGO builders who wanted to update the rules for LEGO Robot Combat. We did this because we wanted to make the LEGO robot fighting more accessible, enjoyable, fair, and safe. In this video, I'm going to explain what LEGO Robot Combat is, what the spirit of the hobby is, the rules that explain what you can and cannot do when building your robot, and how we ensure everyone stays safe. If you want to download your own copy of the rules, there's a link to them in this video's description. This video is about the full-size LEGO robots for Circuit Cube bots. Have a look at the video on my channel as they're a separate entity. Part 1. What is LEGO Robot Combat? LEGO Robot Combat features fully remote-controlled LEGO robots, fighting one-on-one -on -one or in groups or free-for-all rumbles. The matches are timed and at the end either one bot is left standing or the audience decide who they like the most. Robots can have wheels, tracks, legs and feature weapons such as spinners, flippers, hammers, flails, grabbing arms or even grabbing mouths. And some are just really good at shoving their opponents around. There is room for all kinds of builds and designs. Your robot doesn't have to be a knockout machine. It might just be funny, wacky, or do something unique, or just look good. Part 2. The Spirit of LEGO Robot Combat The fighting in our arenas, like what you might see on television or online, can be destructive, tactical, but above all else should be entertaining. In the LEGO arenas, we don't mind if we win or lose, as long as we put on a really good fight for the audience and make it enjoyable for the fighters as well. We always show good sportsmanship to our opponents. Win or lose, we shake hands and congratulate each other on a good battle. Part 3. The UK Build Rules OK, so now you understand what UK LEGO Robot is and what good sportsmanship looks like in it. Let's get on with the main part of this video the rules. The biggest change we've made to the old rules is the tier system. The tier system divides robots into categories based on their power supply which keeps the fights fair and allows people to understand the power levels of their opponents before they agree to take part in a fight. There are three tiers of robots. Tier 1, full stock, tier 2, modified, and tier 3, non-stock. A tier 1 robot is full stock, which means it's all power functions and powered up. These run on AA or AAA batteries or the older style rechargeable packs. An example of a full stock robot would be SMU, Beaky, Kelsey Hammer or Claptrap. A tier 2 robot is modified, which means it still uses the power function motors, but it gets its power and control from a Mold King box. An example of a modified robot would be the Ice Climbers, Bishop and Heatwave. A Tier 3 robot is non-stock. That means it uses Mold King batteries with Mold King motors or a Buiz box running on normal mode with Buiz motors or any kind of third-party motor setup. An example of a non-stock robot would be Stratus, Bluetooth, Freaky or Nighthawk. Size. This is one of the other big changes to the rules. There is now no set size in the UK LEGO robot combat scene. This came from us as a group believing that size rules generally stifle creativity without making fights any fairer or more interesting. We all really love the robots from BattleBots, where the only size restriction is if it can fit through the arena doors. Because of this, you get great robots like Huge or Smee taking part. So now that there are no size limits in the UK LEGO Robot Combat rules, we'd love to see people start to innovate and get creative with the shapes of their robots. No more 32 stud rule anymore. As long as you fit in your weight limit, you can be whatever shape you like. Speaking of weight limit, the other part of the rules that we've changed, weight. 
Because the tier system understands that robots have different power levels, we've decided to give a weight bonus to some types of robots to give them a fairer chance of competing, and to encourage people to start creating more alternate designs. In the rules document that's linked in the description of this video, you'll find this table that explains the weight allowances for each type of robot relative to its tier. So let's unpick this. A single bot, in other words a robot you're putting in the arena on its own, in tier 1 it can weigh up to 1,250 grams, whereas in tier 2 and tier 3 it can only weigh 1,000 grams. SMU is a tier 1 single robot, whereas Ares is a tier 2 single robot. Cluster bots are two robots working together, acting as one robot, sharing half the weight of the robot each. In our new system, they get a 250 gram weight bonus. So if they're a tier 1 cluster bot, each robot can weigh 750 grams. Whereas a tier 2 or tier 3 cluster bot can weigh 625 grams each on a 1,250 gram total. The Ice Climbers are a tier 2 cluster bot. Shuffling or walking bots get a 250 gram bonus. So that means if you're a tier 1 shuffler or walker robot, you can weigh 1,500 grams. Whereas a tier 2 or tier 3 one can be 1,250 grams. Shufflers and walkers are robots that don't use wheels for motion. So it could be a big walking block like Sweepy, or it could be legs like Dead Robotchi, or it could be like actually it vibrates and shakes itself around like Jitterbug. These are all tier 1 examples. A tier 2 example of that would be Mr. Scooty. Finally, we have the weight allowances for the mini-bots. So if you have a mini-bot, it's a small robot that goes alongside your main robot, but its weight must be included in the total weight of what you're putting in the arena. For example, in tier 1, you've got Kelsey Hammer and its wonderful mini-bot, David Hyde Fierce. They can weigh in total together 1,250 grams, but David Hyde Fierce can weigh up to only 375 of that. There are some other rules for building a robot that you should consider. We're not allowing more than two buggy motors for a weapon. Metal parts must be official Lego, and the metal parts can't be doing the hitting part of the weapon, just because it's too dangerous. If you're using elastic bands and string, you can use them to operate a weapon or tidy up wires. They can't be used to make your robot tougher. You can decorate your robot with stickers, but they should be cut along the joins between parts so as not to act in a structural way. Before the start of each event, the robots will be checked by an official to make sure that they adhere to the rules and are deemed safe and fair to run. There will be an opportunity given to anyone to change anything if there are any infringements discovered. The robots can't fight in our arenas until they've been checked. Finally, part 4, the fight rules. Fights will start and end with a signal from an official. Fights may last 2 or 3 minutes unless otherwise stated. Pinning the opponent should last no more than 10 seconds before the aggressor backs off, enough for the opponent to escape. This will be instructed by referee. Grappling the opponent, not a pin, should last no longer than 20 seconds before releasing. This will also be instructed. The pit should not be activated until after 30 seconds of the fight has elapsed. An official will make it known when that time has passed. If a robot is not moving, there will be a period of time to try and allow it to get moving again before the countout from 10 begins by an official. The robot must move in a controlled manner within this time, otherwise the fight will end and the immobilized robot loses. The battery box leaving the body of the robot will lead to a call for a knockout by an official. If you're trying to knock out a cluster bot, you need to knock out both parts of it. And finally, what the officials at the event say goes, as does the vote by the members of the public. So that's it. Now you know everything you need to start designing your own LEGO Merchant of Death. I've included a link to the rules document in the description of this video, and I've also included links to all the channels of the builders that I've included. Do check out their channels and subscribe, they really are excellent people and they share so many of their great ideas. If you have any questions or comments, write them in the comments below. Thanks to Punch Deck for the music, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks all.